as I do with those immediately, rather than waiting until the end of the month when, when I'm likely to have a month's worth of merge conflicts. So if something's painful, you should be doing it more often, not less. So cruise control is, as I mentioned, an automated continuous integration server. It's essentially just a cron job with some reporting stuff slapped on top of it. Uh, cruise control essentially monitors your source control system, like Subversion or Perforce or whatever your SDM is, and it, and it waits for changes to come in. As soon as you check in those changes, what cruise control does is it checks them out from the source control system and then builds them and hopefully tests them. And this is all depending on how you, how you configure and set up your build. And then finally, after the build is done, it reports on what happened during that build. And it shows in the, in the picture there, this is the, uh, the new reporting dashboard, dashboard from uh, Cruise Control for Java 2.7. Um, it shows a little box that indicates for each project what the state of that project is. Green is good, red is bad. Very in keeping with the, the mentality uh, that kind of came, came out of the J unit type testing. So that's sort of continuous integration and cruise control at a very high level. What I'm going to get into now is some of the best practices that if you're trying to do continuous integration, whether it's manual or automated, some of the things you should be, should be doing. So the first one is check in everything. So Prabhu was talking earlier about how you take your, all of your database scripts and uh, check those in into source control along with the code. Not very many organizations are doing that today, but they really should be. You should uh, also check in things. I like to do like check in all the third-party libraries that I might need. I also like to do things like check in the JDK version that I'm using. So that way, when somebody comes to my project and joins my project, all they have to do is get the subversion URL for me, check out the entire source tree from from the repository, and they're up and running in no time. They don't have to go. They don't have to go and download the JDK from some website. They don't have to uh, install and set up, uh, let's say, an application server. They don't have to install and set up uh, an Oracle instance. The way that I like to set it up is so that everything that you need to uh, code and run and test the application comes out of your source control system. And this seems very difficult at first, but there are actually lots of, lots of easy ways, uh, especially with contemporary tools like Eclipse, even IntelliJ, uh, to, get them, to get them all checked into subversion in a way that they're, they're directory independent, so that it doesn't matter where I check them out to, everything will just work. The next test practice. One command to run everything. A single command to build, the, build, test, deploy the entire application. This way everybody in the project is doing exactly the same thing. When I'm working and coding and getting ready to check in, I run a build and as long as it passes, I know that hopefully everybody else in the project should be able to run that, that same build and it will pass in their environment. Uh, everybody, including cruise control, is using the same ant script. There's no, uh, there's no tribal knowledge about how to build and deploy an application. It's all, it's all built into either the ant or rake or an ant script about how to, how to build the application. It makes it repeatable. Next one is testing everything. And so I'm a big fan of test-driven development. So I, I never, I never write a line of code unless I have a broken unit test or a broken functional test that I'm working against. A lot of times, in fact, in the last project that I was working on, as part of the deliverables that the business analysts were giving to the developers, they were delivering functional tests in, in fitness. So what we started doing is we were calling it fit first development, where we have this broken fitness test that we would start coding against, and then we would, we would end up drilling down into whatever the feature was as described in fitness. We drill down into the unit tests that were required uh, in order to uh, implement that feature as well. So we'd, be, we'd start with the fit test, we'd work our way down into the, into the unit test with JUnit, uh, did finally get down to the point where we're writing code, and then bubble our way back up. And by the time we were done with a particular story part, a particular feature, we knew that everything everything had been tested all the way all the way from uh, top to bottom. Uh, so this, this, it includes everything: unit tests, functional tests, acceptance tests, and they should all be automated. 
there's an interesting point in Martin Fowler's article on continuous integration that a program may run, you may actually be able to deploy the application to your application server, for example, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's doing the right thing. So you need to verify it through automated, repeatable tests. Next one is check-in often. In Fowler's article, he says, he says check-in once a day. What I like to do is I like to get teams to the point where we're checking in, let's say, every hour, or at least twice a day. So that's, say, every four hours if you're on an eight-hour day. So what I like to do is I like to set up a timer on my, on my desktop, my, my uh, coding machine, and my pair and 